from you somehow. <laughs>
Thank you so much. And congratulations for a very, very high pianistic level of uh, performance. Of Thank you. So, um, my, hello. My um, feeling is that uh, it's a, on a very, very high standard of pianistic mm -hmm. interpretation. Um, I would like to maybe go further um, on our on our music understanding, let's say, on this, because um, I will tell you very, very generally my, um, um, let's say, the feeling that I have right now, or my, is that your perception of how music is working is very much dependent on what you have to do on the keyboard. So our perception, uh, what we hear is not what you play, mm -hmm. but what you hear. No, so I have the feeling that a lot of your um, music uh, listening, mm -hmm. your musical perception, is interfered by what you have to do with the keyboard. So let's say that what has to happen physically in order to, for this instrument to be played mm -hmm. is catching your attention. And it's very often these things are dependent on a pianistic situation and not on a musical situation. So I would like to take this opportunity to try to have a much wider um, let's say music imagination or to be aware of many things that are not happening in the piano. Mm -hmm. This is a very general thing right now, it's like not telling you anything, but I will try to be very precise and very clear. But in general we can say that um, two things we have to keep in mind right now is that what we pass to the public is not what we play but how we listen. So we can play very well, but not listen well, and then nothing will be understood. Mm -hmm. Or we can perceive very, very good music events mm -hmm. and play a disaster, and it can be fantastically understood. No, and that in general, in, as, as musicians, we think the most important thing that is happening is usually what is not happening at that time. Mm -hmm. So that we have to be very aware of what is not happening. All right, this is a very vague thing, but mm -hmm. we will work on this. And maybe we should start with the second movement. I don't know. Why not? I think so, yes. Yes, I think it's... Uh, why not? Let's start with the second movement. Uh, I will repeat some of the stuff that we worked on with actually Dominique, because... Um, mm -hmm. um, but uh, maybe they will be not very important. So, um, for instance, I would uh, start directly with how notes move. Yes. yes. So, let's say... Let's say the, the, so, for instance, I, I saw that this note and this note, they were behaving very similarly. So, this fermata, yeah, yes. So, maybe we can play from here, from the blah, 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 blah line. Let's see. Yes, yes, the first one, yes. Let's continue. So um, I heard that this, uh, this is the first one. In the second one, you did this. And, um, now, are these fermatas the same or not? I think they are not. The first I think so. one yes. is quarter and the other is uh, eighth. Yes. Um, so you think that the eighth note is shorter than the quarter note? Um, well, mathematic, uh, well, mathematic, uh, However, as for me, yeah. uh, I uh, actually always wanted to shift them because yes. uh, the first one is continuation and yes. the second one is, uh, I think, it's the finishing of the phrase. Absolutely. And I would like to take more time. So now we have a conflict between what you would like to do and what your intuition is telling you and what the notation is. Yeah. Good. So we have to try to solve this conflict. And I tell you right away, I think your intuition will always be right. So there is an enormous amount of music notation limits, limitations. If we are aware of this, then we stop taking things literally. So here, definitely, this is an end of the theme, and then we start first variation. 
So the first is maybe a period, but the second is a period and an absatz. It's something like Glava Novoe. It's a new, a new chapter. chapter, exactly. So it's a new thing. So it, this is not at all the same situation in the music. So he probably writes it like this because we have afterwards an upbeat. As we have an upbeat in the first variation, he has to write eighth note. I see. Yes. So he could write like he writes between the first and second variation. Here he writes an extra bar. So then one in, and then. So here he writes a longer note, but it's very clear because this is already an upbeat. So he cannot write the fermata. It's not needed. And eventually, yes. eventually by, by writing this, it's actually, for me, it's another option to write the fermata. Absolutely. Absolutely. So uh, oof, we have to ask how the notes behave and not how they're written. No, so this is definitely an ending. He cannot write a long note. That means that it's an eighth note that has a fermata, and the other is a quarter note that has a fermata. But it just happens that that's how he has to write it. But still, the first fermata is a period, and the second is an ending. Yes. yes. And uh, then we are actually coming to another question. Yes. So we have one period and one yes. ending. And yes. the ending is a bit longer. And then we need to decide uh, mathematically how... Uh, yeah. Um, how, how long? Uh, how more we develop. Yes. So maybe we should let the notes decide and not the math. So it depends very much on how you're playing it. So if you're playing like this. Mm. This is way too long. But if you play like this. This is too short. In that moment, the note will tell you. I'm sorry, but I cannot give you a better answer. So if we define what we will do and what we want to do, then it's, we put ourselves as the main uh, actor. Mm -hmm. But maybe the music is more important. Mm -hmm. So maybe if we define this has to sound like an end and we have to look back all these 12 bars, then you will find a way. So if we play this, I'm not ending 12 bars. Maybe I'm ending four bars. Mm -hmm. If I play like this, um, maybe I'm ending 40 bars. Maybe this is too much. Mm -hmm. How can we define this? Well, I think first of all, we need to take into consideration that uh, we have just started. Yes, but we have, this is an ending anyway, so it's true. So, but this... So it's not the ending of the whole piece? It's the ending of 12 bars, yes. One moment, is it 12 bars? Yes, okay, <laughs> just in case. So we need to understand from the beginning of this theme, actually, that we have 12 bars of an impulse and that we finish these 12 bars. When we have this time frame in our perception, then we will understand. And how long the fermata will be, we don't know. But what I can guarantee you is in this fermata, if you count, we will hear you counting, which is what we heard. Mm -hmm. So what we perceive is what we will pass to the public. Mm -hmm. no? And so in that moment, you have to look back. And then off, and then this And then we have the French horn. It's like, when does this come? comes kind of here. We don't know how long this fermata will be. Too long, probably. Let's say that um, the music writing is very mathematic, but music movement is something that depends on relationships, on directions, on functions, on processes, and not on definitions. Uh, I will, uh, let's say it will become uh, clearer uh, as soon as we go. Right now it's maybe a little abstract. But um, I felt that uh, very many things you were doing were because they were written. Well, you know, by all means, you need to know why it's written. What, uh, what is written, written there. Yes, but for instance, if I hear this. I'm not so sure this is something that would be understood. So. You were doing an accent. And now the question, you were doing an accent, an accent is written, so we do an accent. Okay, accent means a quicker thing, and I will be safe, and I do a legato, everything's fine. I think this is a very big misunderstanding. 
So the first question, why is the accent there? The second question, does this node know the other nodes? Do they know each other? Um, are they a group uh, of nodes that know each other? Oh, yes, I course. think, yes. Exactly, exactly. So they do know each other. So this accent was making something different from the behavior of all the other nodes. So maybe this accent is, an, is actually not a node that is accent, but it's actually a, a cause of uh, inputs. So, and it can be even maybe a slower note, I don't know. But, um, yeah, yeah. And, uh, it could be. And now, is this one thing or two things? Uh, you mean, uh, These two bars. Two questions. On one, on one, on one hand, one uh, dynamic separate bar. On the other hand, yeah. two leaks. Yes. Two separate leaks. Yes. Another so, contradiction, so probably... Yes, and we have still this. No? Yes. Yes. So uh, let's say the question is, uh, does the C, this one, know this note? Mm -hmm. uh, are they acquainted? Uh, music is a very live thing. You know? So the notes, let's say that they have a life and they have a social life. So are they members of the same Facebook group or are they uh, totally different Facebook groups? Uh, well, I think if um, under Facebook we understand harmony, it's yeah. definitely two different harmonies because we have yes. uh, this... Uh, yes. Yes, yes. Is this harmony, is there a movement between the harmonies or are, is this a counterposition or is this a relationship? Do these two harmonies befriend each other in, har in Facebook or they ignore each other? I think if we simply simplify this, we will get uh, and Absolutely. Uh, dominant. Absolutely. Absolutely. So there's one movement that actually binds these two harmonies together. So and this it goes to here. So we are interested in music about the movement between the notes, the direction between the notes, the relationship between the notes, and the main information is always between the notes, before the note, after the note, and with what we are not hearing. And so I fear that very often, by defining the note, we are missing this. Can we try again? Yeah. For me, this is already more edible. This, uh, this I can understand much more, mm -hmm. yes. And if we make this the last two bars out of 16, it would be fantastic. So this for this are two. This starts from there. And here. Sorry. So all this happens before. So this is already a vendor point and an ending. And now these do not know each other. This is a new Facebook group. Yes, exactly. So we have to ask the notes who, who are they related to? Where are they going? Who are they friends with? Yeah. Yeah. Harmony. Mm -hmm. harmony is important, but then harmony has a relationship to each other. So here they are not related, but this you, you did very well. Uh, I'm jumping from one thing to the other, I'm sorry, but I think it's... it's, oh, but it's okay. You know, why don't they... Uh, okay, mm -hmm. uh, let's do from there, yes. Mm -hmm. we take a look at this right now. I mean, we want to start with the second movement and now we finish with something totally different, but why not? <laughs> Who cares? So I would uh, like to um, right now speak about what is happening here as a matter of function, direction, and uh, processes. So we have here the... <laughs> this is the typical third element of four elements of a phrase, which is the element of tension. No? So we have one element... This is the first element, and this is the consequence of... Uh, but this is not an ending, so then we have the tension. And then we have... So these four elements are what any kind of music uh, piece actually usually is structured with. 90% probably of the music is structured on these four elements, which is, let's say, an exposition, a consequence, a tension, and a resolution. No, so whatever you want to. So, mm, 
Konsequenzen. Die Welt Menschen. Ende, Ende. So. And now this is where we get kidnapped. 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 So we are not there anymore. So this is an unpredictable situation. Mm -hmm. We expect... Yes, so... So we have no idea what will happen. And what is absolutely unpredictable is this hit. This is really unpredictable, and you are making a strong contact. And then, and this will trigger them. So this will be an important thing because this will become come out of there. And then we have them. This is a very wide. This is a very wide subdominance. for making this a uh, concept. So uh, let's say that um, we will need to uh, hear as a listener the relationship between these functions. Mm -hmm. So this is very, very predictable. We had it before. No, this is not very predictable, it's but, but it's very logical. Now this is not predictable and not logical. And this is the seventh, so we have no idea where it goes. It could go anywhere. It could, it could, it could go there. We have no idea where it goes. And then we have a, this. It's a very unpredictable too, of all of a sudden an opening, that we have no idea what we'll do. And now this silence probably is already a um, G flat major. So, so, yeah. So this silence is already active, probably, and then we have the. Okay, we're going to, and then instead of doing the, this, what the Americans call the German chord, we have a very, very long subdominant. And this is why he writes this as a unit. No, and then we have a so-called Wendepunkt, um, a turning point, pavarotny moment. Yes, that's the word. So a Wendepunkt, um, and this actually means that from there we have a cadenza, and this is an ending. And then with a resolution, it will not happen. That's right. From the, um, maybe, um, maybe from there, yes. Yes, move this, and this is the consequence. And this continues to this tension. And we don't know what will happen. You are already telling us. Yes, this was better. This is probably better. Yes. So when we play, play mm -hmm. what our hands do, it always has to follow some kind of physical preparation. But in music, our perception is not dependent on this. So in music, we can hear something before the note, we can hear something with the note, or we can hear something after the note. And in your perception is almost always before the note. Uh, so this is the first thing, the timing of perception is the first thing that I would like to actually work right now. It might um, be a little disturbing at first, but let's say that we can make some kind of music event as a necessity and we know it and we want it and we do it. This is a very romantic note right now. Or we can have something that we perceive, okay, C minor. No, so we can have a... So we don't prepare, but we hear it there. Okay. Or we can hear something after it happened. So we have uh, something. And then, have you heard? It's a C minor. So this in Beethoven makes not a lot of sense, but this makes a lot of sense, for instance, in impressionistic music. What have you played lately by Ravel Debussy? I mean, this, if they would hear me t calling him impressionist, they would be very unhappy, I'm sorry. So uh, let's say by this French music or... Um, 
So can you imagine that you play I'm right now preparing everything. Or you play Right now I'm playing, but I'm not listening to what I'm playing. I'm reacting to what I just played. I'm reacting to the note. So let's say that um, Debussy note, to put it like this, is a note that actually happens in nature, and we listen to it afterwards. No? Let's put it in a very general way. No? A Beethoven note is something that happens on the time, or a Mozart note. It's very much in the moment. And romantic notes usually happen way before. We need to have a, I need a D-sharp, I need a D-sharp. This is my D-sharp. And Mozart is D sharp. And in Debussy, we have a, listen, there's a D sharp. So, this is uh, right now I'm making this connected to different times of composition or to different aesthetics. But this is true for, uh, let's see, a piece like this. So, a piece like this, a big romantic sonata, is something extremely linked to a novel, to, to some writing. So, if imagine that you are reading a novel, so you can uh, read the description. Or you can read how one person is saying something to the other person, or maybe some person listens to somebody else saying something to a third person, or maybe, so we have all these different situations right now for us. No? So if we have, let's say, an information, it can be you speaking, it can be somebody telling this to you, it can be you listening to somebody speaking to another person, or it can be you reading it. The information is the same, but how we are as interpreters is very different. So if we speak, we have an if we are reading this and if somebody's telling this to us, then we have a reaction to this. Or if we are just uh, seeing that somebody's telling this to another person. So we have different levels of involvement and different timings of perception. Uh, is it, this is all making sense, right? So uh, let's say that we, it's very important that our arms can move before our ear. Or that the part of our brain that deals with the music perception is not dependent on the part of the brain that deals with the pianistic playing. So when we have them, we have no idea what will happen here. And same thing here. We don't know what's happening. I'm speaking too much. Can you try? But it, this is clear, right? Let's try. So let's say that it's, uh, it will open an entire new uh, level of perception if this movement that you do for the piano is not immediately interfering with your listening. Mm -hmm. uh, Maybe again, sorry, I'm a, yes, I, I, yes, I played it from here, yes. So this, uh, this is your music, yes, and, and, and this continues to uh, the and now you prepare this, but don't think about what will be. So only there, yes. Same thing in the arms. Yes. So um, let's say that what we feel that you are preparing is a physical uh, situation that is a, it's in itself is not a problem, but it's an indicator that you are thinking and over the next swing, this is the movement of the neck. So if you have this... Um, then that means that we, our entire, um, let's say, physical being is already defined about what we will do. But maybe the maybe this doesn't come from. And same thing here. We don't know what will happen. Oh, ho. that's right. From here, maybe. You prepare, but don't listen to him. And here you write. Yes. So yeah. So this is something that is. Don't even. Don't even listen to this note. Don't even. Uh, so don't. Don't watch this note. No. We don't know what will happen. Maybe this. No. So then. Yeah. 
this. And this accent is actually something that depends on the two notes. It's not the beginning of one note. You're making accent and sorzando. But this is a result of a movement, and this movement is a result of a need before the note. This is a little better. And yes, uh, keep the attention. Keep the attention, keep the attention. And now we have the, more, the inflection and cadenza. And this looks back. Yes. And now we have the back. Yeah, yeah let's see. Yeah. And is this is the last bar? Yeah. Uh, so um, if this is the last bar here, but in the coda, in the coda of the beginning of the, probably it's not the last bar, but the first bar. Because this is the result of this. Yes. So, can we start from here? Yes. Now this is the start, because this is the result. Yes. So it is the last bar, but at the same time, this Brahms makes it very, very often that he starts with the ending of something. This entire piece is at work in this direction. Op 76, number one, for instance. So that always the ending is the beginning of the next one. So then... This is start. Because then... And this is a start. Oh, oh. And that was a short make. That's right. So we have a fluctuation of many different parameters in music, and uh, maybe we should speak about these parameters right now. So in this kind of music, we can have some very important parts and some very unimportant parts. So we can have some, a lot of activity and a lot of passivity. We can have a uh, direction is going very much forward, a direction is going very much backwards. Mm -hmm. So we have music that depends on the future or music that depends on the past, mm -hmm. or something that is a very important present. So uh, we have things that are absolutely normal and predictable, and we have things that are absolutely not predictable at all. So these different fluctuations of different parameters, first of all, they don't have anything to do with each other. No? We can have some very active music that is absolutely not important and flowing back. Mm -hmm. No, we can have something that is very, very passive, but very important. Mm -hmm. So these parameters are not flowing too much as a dialectic conduct. Mm -hmm. I'm being very, right now kind of very abstract and philosophical, I'm mm -hmm. sorry, but it would be very practical. Uh, it's yes. uh, actually reminds me of uh, like actors work yes. with, uh, well, with their tests, with uh, yes. how, they, uh, uh, how they collaborate with each other, if it's a piece, how they react, with, uh, yes. how they show, yes. how they provide. Yes, yes, yes. So this is, uh, this is a very big narrative, you're absolutely right. So I did a bit this, uh, I had a bit of Peter Corte, so Fantastic. And, uh, I understand it's not the only piece in common, so I understand what you're talking about. Fantastic. So let's put this into practice in the second movement. Mm -hmm. So in the second movement, we have, uh, where are, for instance, where are unpredictable things in the second movement? Can we try to find some things that are not predictable? Mm -hmm. So the theme is a very clear, Menezang. This is very, this is a Facebook group of a knot of notes. 12, mm -hmm. 12 bars are forming one very nice Facebook group. Say that, uh, the first unpredictable thing yes. is uh, in bar 11. Oh, this is interesting. In, you're absolutely right, in, in a sense. This is, uh, the, let's say, this is the program of the mini lead. No, this is a very important part. I'm not so sure it's unpredictable, though. And I'm telling you this because it is, uh, when you see it, the text is very clear. So we are speaking about how beautiful the moon is actually going out. And yeah, there's uh, cows and whatever, and it's um, blue flowers and whatever, and there's uh, flowers in the hall. But then there's women in the hall too, and this is all for the schönste Rosa. Mm -hmm. Exactly, so this is a very important point, that actually we feel that all this thing is actually dedicated to a woman, mm -hmm. to a girl, no, to a woman, to a female being, yes. Even if it is not uh, unpredictable, yeah. well, at least it's 
It's very important. It's a promissory. This is very important. Yes, you're absolutely right. Yes. Okay. The next thing, to, 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 so this is the first uh, variation. Is there something unpredictable? Uh, well, first of all, we have new elements. Yes, we have the French word, yes. yes. Hello to be shorty. Yes, absolutely. Uh, yes, uh, and uh, finally we have uh, harmonically yes. something more Yes, sharp. absolutely, yes, 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 exactly. And now this is a part of a movement too, eh? so it's not an accent, but uh, it's a part of a movement. So it's not. I know there's an accent written, but these notes go into each other. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yes, but but. But the sharpness of the harmony, or let's say the tension of the harmony, does have no direct relationship to its speed. So I'm not so sure that we can define the speed of the harmony by its tension. The speed of the start of the harmony. So um, this can be like this, or this can be like this too. So these are other parameters, I'm afraid. Absolutely, this is not like that. And then the Napoletano. Yes, so this is slower, that's why it's written sostenuto. Yes. Okay, then. This is a variation. And again, we have this. And now, the Schönste Rosa. Okay, now here we have another very unpredictable thing. First, second variation. So this is a variation, so it's predictable there's new elements, but this is what we expect from a variation. So we have to react to them, definitely. That's right. Okay, so this is already probably quite unpredictable, no, this third bar. So we, have, we started with them. Um, It's another um, mond auf. Uh -huh. So we expand. Yes, absolutely, absolutely. Uh, yes, oh, yeah. Uh, so this is a bar that is absolutely unpredictably placed there. So time stops. Mm -hmm. <laughs> So this you should play without yourself. The total normal, okay, no harmony. And now time stops and this is something. Yes. And now it contests. Yes. So this, yeah, it can be done in different ways, but it's important that we understand that this third bar is something that is not from the so, yeah, you could do a own word. You could play like this even if you want. So it's not about making this. Yeah. So now this can be even more. It's possible, yes. And now we continue, yes. forward right now. Look back. And only now. Yes, exactly. So uh, this is um, in your perception, the moment that you think about the next thing, we will think about the next thing too. Mm -hmm. So even if you make a fermata mm -hmm. and you make a diminuendo and you keep the pedal, we will listen to this. That's uh, what I mean. It's more even uh, rock, 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 rock. 
process. So we have to define these things. So uh, I felt that in general, music was very much going forward mm -hmm. and there was not a lot of uh, contact, but we will work on this. I have one small remark, by the way, we discussed this this morning here. So if you see, uh, you have this, um, first he writes before the time, then he hit. And then he writes actually, see he writes two notes out and then he writes only the trill. No? Mm -hmm. And then twice he writes again. And then he writes only trill. No? So yeah, these are written out. No, that's right, that's right. He, he will mm -hmm. be writing here. But here he writes it out, he writes it out, and here he writes it out. And nowhere else. So if we be right now are very literal, then we would do them differently. But I think this is another thing of notation. Yeah. Is there anything different happening here? Uh, what do you mean? Uh, are there, so are there, is this different notation because of some musical reason? Um, I cannot see any. No, I mean, I, it's I, all, I cannot see, yeah. I cannot see either. Exactly. So I would say that our intuition is right, and this is a notation thing. And so the notation is so that mm -hmm. he makes sure that in the beginning we know these are three notes, mm -hmm. because this sign no, can be. be exactly. Say, exactly. Uh, Exactly. For example, you, you probably know uh, Vladimir Mishuk. Yes, he would play from upper. He plays yes. He yes. Upper. yes. Oh, you see. He prefers to, to combine it because of the pedal and because he knows the best. Right? Yes, but this is, uh, but this is probably uh, probably very good. So uh, what you're saying is that he's playing between the time. Oh no. He, uh, he well, I do. So this is the question that we decided this morning. So either you play it before time or you play it on time. This is the usual uh, two, uh, uh, two ways, but I think it's the third way that is much better, which is playing between time. Oh. Yes. So... Um, am I playing before time? No. Am I playing before time? This works much better. You know, this is a critical question with. What is better? I think that both are wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I think this is better than. Yes. Yeah, so. Um, so. Yes, this is difficult. Yes, this is not easy, uh, but if you do it, I think uh, there's many, many things that you can use this for, and it's a much more natural mm -hmm. movement. So in general, we can say that when we have a kind of ornament, mm -hmm. it depends very much on the rhythmic situation of this ornament. You can play it before time, on time, or between time. Mm -hmm. I get you one example in Beethoven. Right now it's his birthday year, so it's good to talk about Beethoven. For instance, there's one sonata where we have the same ornamentation. Yeah. Absolutely. Mm. Yeah, there's, um, there's a lot of, or, um, so there's a lot of Beethoven and Brahms. I mean, there cannot not be. <laughs> and um, I think the first symphony, when he finally proposed the symphony, there was one critic that told him, no, but Mr. Brahms, um, you know, this sounds like Beethoven. No? And, this, and this is totally, yes. And he's told to the critic, in German, I'm sure you will understand. Aber das merkt ja jeder Ese. So any stupid person will know this, you know? Of course, I mean, this is Beethoven's 10th symphony. So, and this is Beethoven's 33rd sonata, in a way. Or 37th, depending on how you count it, no? So this is, uh, yeah, this is another thing. So uh, what I wanted to say is, so in Beethoven, there's, for instance, one sonata there. We have three times the same ornamentation, and I think it should be three times played in a different way. This is Opus 14, 49, number one, you know, the... Mm -hmm. So we have this. So it doesn't fit. There is on the time. 
this is between the two. And this is before time. And how do you decide when you're speaking? Yeah, it be, depending on what happens before and what happens after. So if we have a very even uh, movement, then it should be between time usually. This is what happens here. Mm -hmm. If we start a quick movement, it should be before time. Before time. Before time. For instance, before it's nothing. No, it's not. Probably. And it's on the beat if be before we have something. No. That's kind of. Because before we have many notes, mm -hmm. fast notes, and then the ornament is a long note. Mm -hmm. So it takes the ornament tends to take time from the longer note. No, this is, uh, let's say this goes for Baroque uh, pieces and for classical pieces, for Romantic pieces and for 20th century and for 21st century probably too. Mm -hmm. So it's just a matter of movement. So here all the notes are even, so probably it's around the note. Anyway, it, th this is my belief. Um, I have no, no message from Brahms, but I think it would be better. I would better. like to talk over his uh, old generation when they will have time. Okay, that's fine. No problem. We, we, will, we will still move. So this is then the unpredictable situation. Huh? Mm -hmm. Okay, we have another one here. Then, for instance, uh, let's continue looking for the unpredictable situations. Yeah. What is the next... Um, Yes. It's actually, actually here it's yes. Uh, I mean, it's already the second time that it happens, so maybe it's not so unpredictable, no, but not it's still not part of the melody. Yeah. Uh -huh. So, well, here it's a bit uh, different, uh, just a bit different uh, way to... To ornament, to or harmonize some... Um, to... Yeah, but... Um, I would say that on some point uh, this... Yes. Uh, this is an unpredictable he harmony. He changes... Not only yeah. he changes everything, the way of uh, motion, he but changes, um, he changes what, what is now made. Yes, so, so the unpredictable things is the harmony of the tonality. I would say it's unpredictable, but unexpectedly he yes. changes completely. The yes, the texture, yes. Yes, yes this is definitely. All right, mm -hmm. next unexpected thing. And very unexpected. Yes, uh, absolutely, absolutely. And, uh, yes. Because he changes the, uh, the audience. Yes. So, but um, maybe he changes the rhythm because of some other things. So, what is important is that we have the already the end of the second variation. No. So we're. And now we can zoom to. So we expect already a third variation to happen. Instead, we have a coda. So this is one of these passive things. No? So we have something that depends on the path, and then we still go on, and we finish with this. No? So this is already a very unexpected turn of the events in the second variation. So these are the things that we should probably um, uh, think or perceive when we're playing. hear that you were listening to this already before you played. Yes. This is an ending. And now the arms will do this, not you. This is better. And now here we have another situation, is that you are switching from one instrumental group to the other. So you're doing the first one, and then here you're going. So uh, you play first uh, strings, and then you take the piccolo. Is this correct, or do you think you have a group, speaking of theater, that you have a group of musicians or of theater people that do one thing and another people other things? 
let's say, okay, is there a transition between here and here? What's happening between here and here? Yes, but do these stop playing? Do they stop? No, I think it's uh, uh, compared to the reason why he writes I don't care. Yes, uh, exactly. It's uh, like, uh, fun like a fundamental. Exactly. Yeah. So uh, now in your perception, what I heard is that you were playing this very well. Mm -hmm. You stopped. Okay, guys, I'm sorry. I will come back to you, but now I have to do this. You know? Okay. Okay, thank you. I will come back to you. Now I do this. But I guess that what all these guys, they are already present when you do this. So they are already there. It is still there. So to make a movement between here and here is on the piano, but not on the music. So let's say that in your perception, you should make a place for what you're not playing. So while you're playing... Sorry, sorry for making this, but uh, so we need to listen to what we're not playing. Mm -hmm. And then between this and this, this is absolutely to be ignored. So this is just because you have two arms. I have the same problem. You know, if we would have three arms or four arms, it would be much easier, but we have only two. But this movement is not in the music. This movement is in the piano, and we don't care about piano. Yes. Yes, this is so better, yes. 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 And now this is the third thing. Yes. Careful, because you're already preparing. Yeah, so the percentage of this fermata is much more to the back than to forward. So, and you're starting the preparation earlier. So here, um, there you have to finish. Probably this is 20 bars. No, how long is this variation? I don't know. And then, yeah. It's a total ending. Yes, maybe it's better. Okay, so maybe, yeah, let's, let's do this variation and we go forward, maybe. So now, let's work on this. Is that sometimes I think that you split up some things that are a member of a family. You know, so here, don't phone. It was a little bit like this. But all these notes know each other, so. The Can we try all this? So this nose which goes to the E flat. And now this is unbreakable. Yes. Thank you. This is better. And now I think, uh, can you play only left hand, the melody? So, yeah. And uh, only left hand and of this variation. Yeah. So we have a difference between the movement of the... 
So the, um, um, the, we have a, this is still quite, quite, uh, let's say, fast. I mean, no. this is kind of fast again because of the, but now we have, so in each variation, we slow down the movement of the interval, the movement of the notes. Let's say if these are um, fast notes, now these are a little slower. And even slower would be this. I'm having the same tempo, mm -hmm. but different rhythm. Uh, do you, I think you understand, right? So you were playing this, but maybe this is it. Yeah, so I'm not Let's make an experiment. You play this with the right hand. And I played before one bar of different accompaniments. And you react to my accompaniment. You are slower than me. So this um, sorry, um, reacts to what happens in the other hand. You know? So if you don't, you don't, maybe it's not very good. Uh, it's weird. So this could be slower. You were playing slower before. I instigated the faster tempo. It can be a slower tempo. It's not about this. But this is a better connection between the accompaniment and the movement of the melody. OK. May we can do the coda? Or do you have any question? Because we could. Um, well, I have some, but I prefer the thicker, thicker of this. I may prefer this one. You have some. OK. But maybe you can. Maybe you can give me if there's a question right now in your native language, and I can translate a little bit, maybe, if there's something. Good. That's fine. I mean, we have tomorrow too, or we have later, no yeah. problem. So maybe we can do the coda. Maybe from there to that. Yes. So now you have to look back, and this is the ending. forward and they're going back and now right hand going forward yes and the left hand going forward yes and then so um, let's say that what was for me not too understandable is is that this goes forward to here. And then this again, we have a wave going to here. And the right hand is exactly opposite. So somehow they were not doing this. Yes. So their uh, notes have a direction and they move. No? So there's very few notes in Brahms basically. I don't, I don't think there's a single note that does not move somewhere. That doesn't have, let's say, an accelerando or the accelerando situation. No? So this is an accelerando situation, and now this is a ritardando situation. I'm not speaking about the real time, no, but it's not this. So we have melodic direction; it goes up and it goes down, but we have rhythmic direction too. 
it goes forward to me, it goes backwards. So music has a flow and the flow can go in a forward motion or in a backward motion. So if we play in... Oh, let's take something very similar to... I'm not flowing anywhere. But we need to show... And this goes now back. This goes back. And... So it's not a dynamic thing. So it's a feeling of flow. Now we're going back point. You understand? So we have in um, feeling on flow. So if we do this, we're not flowing. You, you understand the difference? So the same thing. So this goes forward and this goes back. Yeah. And it's not about dynamic or about real tempo, let's say Yachirando. That's right. Yes, and now right hand goes forward and left hand goes back. And the right hand, left hand goes forward and right hand goes back and right. So I understand that this seems a little strange because this has nothing to do with how you play the dynamic or how you play the sound or how you play the, the tempo even. It's about feeling how the notes move between each other. But this is where the main information is, I believe. Yes. Yes, really, and right hand goes forward. It's not a crescendo, but uh, it's... This is the third thing, so this is already next to the ending, and now we have the cadenza ending, and now we have the new, yes, exactly. And this is the consequence, and this is the tension, and now we have the ending, and now we have the th four notes that will be in the th third movement. Yes, you, 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 why do you do the lower more than the upper? I mean, and uh, is it because of them? Um, because you want to do this? Hmm? Why do you do um, around there? Hmm? Um, yes, this accent does not necessarily mean that it's a lower note. We have three voices. So Schumann writes the accent next to a note. And uh, Brahms never writes the accent next to a note. So in Beethoven and in Brahms, I'm not so sure they know which note the accent it is if we have one chord. But we have uh, these, mm, this is uh, parallel. With, uh, no? So if you do this, um, you do like this? No, I don't. Okay, then maybe it would be better to make the third. Yes. yes. Through two. Yes. We need um, to. Yeah, that's better. And it goes back. So if you play this and you can be in the past with your imagination of the time and you think about the first movement, even too, the first and second movement, then we will understand mm -hmm. the function of this. But this is very, very good. I, I mean, I understand very well. And then from there. Okay, I feel like I've been speaking a lot. I'm <laughs> sorry, maybe you should ask some questions or we can go to the first movement and make a more normal lesson, let's say. This is not the time, right? Okay, this is Moscow. So maybe we should go to the first movement. That's great. We have. Yeah, so um, we have expositional first, and then we have a transition, and then we have another exposition. Now, let's. So this goes until here. Let's try. Okay. Good. So, um, Mr. 
Beethoven, I mean, it's his birthday, he said to Czerny apparently that in the music, 70% of the notes help 30% of the notes. So let's say that 30% of the notes are important and 17% of the notes are helping this other 30%. Of course, this fluctuates. So if you have a Bach invention, there's probably 80 or 90% of the notes that are important. And here probably, if you have a list, uh, I don't know. Something we have is probably this, this probably is maybe only 5% of the notes are important. And this doesn't mean that music is better or worse, it's just like this. No? So we have uh, this. This goes to. And now this is not important to me. So if you. Then we don't understand anymore what's important. Can we try again? Stop! This is a moment going to here. Not important to me, yes. And then I turn. And this continues to this. And we will continue. We have a lot of activity there, but no importance whatsoever. So it's not. But this is. So this is a transition. This is not important. Let's try from the. Sorry. Yes, it's just yes, yes, very much. But this does not. Yes. That's what And the general direction is to the fourth bar. So we have one bar, bum, 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 yes. One bar, one bar, and half bar, half bar, quarter, 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 one, one bar. And then half bar, and half bar, and one bar. Unpredictable, unpredictable. Half bar and unpredictable, yes. So here we have already unpredictable events, yes. So I notice that you are trying to separate something by waiting. I think this is not a very good idea. So if we wait between things, we create a connection. So if you want By waiting, I make a transition. So if we really want to disconnect, we should never wait. It just happens. Can we tell? Again from there. Yes, and then half and half. Yes, so I'm not here to this come. Let's say this is again the problem that you don't have three arms. Because officially this is what should happen in the orchestration, and so we cannot play this, but this is already the movement. Unpredictable and unpredictable. And yes. So uh, all these accents for me they stop emotion. You're doing it. This is how I perceive it. I don't hear. I don't hear that this accent actually is a moving melody. Can we try? result of this so it's not very important all this is one harmony so this is like the So then, so if you wait so much, then you already know. And then maybe this is better to let it flow without you knowing what is happening. The 
afraid that this gets very much chopped up. So you were doing this and then... And, mm. So the moment that you stop listening to the movement of an interval and prepare the next note, for us is a stop. Let me play so for... I'm playing very professional right now. But I can imagine that you don't think that this is a real healthy melody. So I... Let's see if we can have one arm for... Yes. And continue. And this is not the ending. This goes... Yes. And this is an expansion. Even so... Accents mean slow note very often. And now turning point and ending. And unexpected. So I believe I believe that this actually poco ritenuto goes only for these eight bars. I'm not so sure that this is the same tempo as here. Probably it's rather a similar tempo to here. I imagine. Did you have to yeah. change the technique? Um, this was not um, um, enough change. Yes, and this was not enough going back here. I think. Can we take it from here, maybe? So, sorry for, for interrupting again. So, uh, you're doing a ritardando and this is a ritenuto. I'm speaking before the poco ritenuto. What is the difference between ritardando and ritenuto? Sorry for making this uh, solfeggio question. But Good question. So, this is uh, something that uh, anybody who speaks a Latin language probably is. is I mean, the difference between the uh, gerundif and the uh, participle or the gerundium. So, ritardando, it's a continuous action, and ritenuto is an immediate situation. So a ritenuto is something that creates tension by holding back the tempo, but it doesn't make it little by little slower. It's immediately something slower. So if we have... This is a ritenuto. I'm not saying you should play like this, but you're doing a ritardando. So... So I think this ritenuto is an immediate retention of the tempo, mm -hmm. which happens because of the tension, not the distension. And how about the key of... This is ritenuto. This is the ritenuto I'm speaking about. Mm -hmm. Yes. Oh, this is the one that I... So immediately here we have a retaining. And not slower, not slower, not getting slower. It's an immediate retention. And now you have the same tempo here. This is to flow. This is to move. So this moves to, to here. Yes, you still have the ritenuto. Yes. Poco ritardando. And now release. And now we are back to the tempo. Yes, it is like before. Exactly. So this is not an epic. Intervals. It's a movement, it's not. A, yes, that's better. And now we go back to the. And we need. It's not necessarily slower, but it's better. 
An accent means a note that is actually slower, not necessarily louder. Yes, I think this is more understandable. Move to and now this is a start, and this is a continuation, and this is another start. Yes, yes. and now we have one bar. Yes, half bar, half bar, half, half. The end of the and then ending. And then kind of thing. Yes, and so this is definitely not a contact. So this is we think it will go. So the fact that we have another cadenza is a very quick shift. There is no connection between the and this. So this is something that it happens very often in Brahms. No? You know the I don't have play it so This is an ending, and then we have another ending. But if we play in, this can kind of help. Can we try again? From the, um, yes. Ending. Still, I see that you're going forward. Can we do this soon? Yes. And now we do this. Make something with your hands, not on the, or you can do something like this. And now this, what you will prepare, will be something that you should not know. Your arms will know, but not your ears. No. And same thing. Without losing time. This is this is a challenging situation. Yes. So this is the challenging situation. This is, I think, from this entire first movement, the part where there's the biggest distance between the preparation of the arms and the listening of our perception. No, and this is what we have to try to really take as far from each other as possible. Ending, 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 ending. Can you look back? I see you preparing this with your entire. This is better. You're taking time right now to make an ending and to start the other note. And now this time, Brahms does not want us to take. When you say some very last words, again, last words, and again. No, so this is a very quick shift. Let's continue. Look back, go back, flow back. Yes. So, forward at the end of
so I hear this in the left hand. I don't. Right, that this is not uh, these two bars, so this is new. But it's much more effective if you do not wait between them. So uh, yeah, maybe from there. Yes. Mm -hmm. because here there's nothing happening. So once you have the timpani, all this is nothing, only it will continue here. Mm -hmm. So all these bars, these are over eight bars, have no, uh, let's say that the situation here is a separating situation. Time stops. Mm -hmm. Left goes, this goes up, left that goes up. Again, two bars. And now we have the new harmony. Four bars. Yes. yes. This was better, exactly. Yeah, so this is like in, a, in any kind of novel where the same situation. I mean, if you take the Zauberberg, for instance, by Thomas Mann you will see that there is one chapter where there's maybe five minutes and another chapter is 10 years. So the amount of words that we have is the same and then he goes even back. So time is extremely relative in the playing. And in fact, this is maybe a little philosophical, but I think this is what music is there to try to free us up from the slavery of time. So in music, almost nothing goes as fast or as slow as the real life. And we sometimes stop time, we make time quicker, we make time back. No? So here we have to stop time. And very soon we will stop time here too, but it's okay. Um, maybe, um, do you want to try again? Although I thought that this was much, much more understandable for me. Well, I can try again Wherever you want. Mm. But well, maybe we should go. Yes, but maybe, maybe we should not. I think it's absolutely understandable. I think it's very understandable, yes. So uh, to speak about this uh, melodic movement, uh, sometimes I felt, I feel that melodic movement is stopped when you don't. So uh, this, so a melody is a movement between two notes. It's not a definition of two notes. Yes. Thank you. So uh, maybe um, uh, let's take a look at this, uh, and maybe then afterwards we can uh, we can finish unless you have any questions. So it's, it's close to what we did with the third variation, same movement. So let's see what's happening in the left hand. So. For instance, how many voices do we have in this first? Yes, if I play this, 
Stokely. If I'm, I still think it's three verses. Yes. So this is another thing of the music notation. You know, music notation is terrible. It's some of the worst thing that white man has made. I'm sorry, but I really think it's absolutely terrible. So um, if we have all these eight notes, uh, there's no way of understanding these are three voices. And this is an appoggiatura and an appoggiatura. And this is the fourth voice. So we have four voices. So we play. So it's very scary to make melodic contact between notes that have only harmonic contact. So here, this goes forward, and these are three voices. Yes. Yes. So now we have a situation that we have the melody in the right hand, and this has to go forward. So this is the. And the left hand in the last part of the bar has harmonic notes that go down. So this is kind of in a conflict right now in you. So you have to be able to do this, let's say the left hand diminuendo, right hand crescendo. I don't like these words, but this would be a... Yes, so this goes forward and this goes forward. Yes, same thing here. And same thing here. Exactly, so these are four voices, no? So if we do this, this is maybe not go to. Yes. I understand the left hand better, but the right hand I cannot understand because the right hand has the right of going forward. Yes, even more here, even more here. This is a little better. Unpredictable. This 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 was unpredictable. So don't predict. Don't predict. Don't predict. Yes. I'm so, oh, sorry. This is normal. This is normal. 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 And now this is not. Yes. And this is faithful. We have one bar. And half bar. Half bar. Quarter. 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 Eight. 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 eight, eight. For me, oh, everything what I wanted to actually discuss, we have done. Do you have any questions? Uh, yes, but uh, I will tell them as long as I will uh, a bit uh, finalize it in my head. In my head. Perfect. I am happy to go in tomorrow ah, a little okay. deeper. Yes, we can continue with the third and fourth movement. Mm -hmm. okay. Are there any questions from the public in whatever language? Everything is clear in life. Wonderful. Okay, then thank you so much. We'll see each other tomorrow then. Thank you. Thank you.